Hi, my name is David Stan Yunus. I'm records archivist at the Presbyterian Historical Society. And this is a short introduction to problems of digital preservation called, wait, you're saying I should use paper for permanent records. Uh, yeah, we are. Uh, paper is good. Uh, paper is the cheapest, reliable, steady state carrier of text over the long term. Um, the best practice for PCUSA congregations and mid councils, as far as we've seen, um, is what's done in the Presbytery of New York City. They publish their minutes to the web in PDF. They store PDFA copies on their local network and in the cloud, and they print an official version to acid free paper. They store the paper in the classic three post Cokesbury binder. When the binder is full, they have the 300 or 400 pages hard bound, and they deposit that with us. Um, what's on the screen is a snippet of session minutes from a church in Nebraska um, showing that you know, paper, one of the additional benefits is that it's comparatively hard to fake. It bears diplomatic traces in its own physical nature. And what we mean by that are proofs that it is authentic, that the paper is authentic. Um, so here we have a couple of signatures, a date, a stamp, and so on. Um, in the very near term, committing text to acid-free paper helps with some of the intellectual problems of born digital record keeping, um, chief among them bulk and authenticity. Having a solid state version of text means you're less likely to throw the whole kitchen sink into your minutes. You're reducing the bulk of your records to essential functions uh, and, we're, and you're making them comprehensible to future users. Also having one version of your minutes that receives a stamp from a governing body uh, clarifies the relationship among copies. Uh, you, know, you know which copy is the item of record. You're reinforcing a source surrogate relationship. Um, what archivists have found over the course of the 20th century is that as it becomes easier to create content, texts, audio, video, still images, as the barriers to creating media drop, we, as people simply create more media. Uh, that means that the burden on people who are in charge of managing even small amounts of born digital content is pretty severe. Um, what you see pictured is a plastic bag full of DVDs and terabyte drives uh, containing media from the PCUSA. Uh, the process of running virus scans, creating directory printouts, ripping media off disks, and finding readers for Mac formatted drives, which is extremely bare bones, extremely minimal digital preservation interventions um, took me the better part of three weeks. <laughs> uh, this collection has uh, over 131,000 files in it. So we continue to recommend acid-free paper as the preferred carrier of text for the very long term, um, but you will continue to live in a hybrid paper and born digital environment because of the different virtues of paper and digital formats as carriers of text. So there are absolutely kinds of content that cannot be saved as paper. Uh, you can't print out Super Mario Brothers, right? Uh, you, you can technically, but what you get is the whole game's operating instructions written in hex. And how would you read that? Uh, well, you would read that with a piece of software called an emulator. And I'm just going to see if I can share this screen instead. Oh, yeah. Great. Yeah. So you would use an emulator. And what's running right now is an emulator for the Super Nintendo. Um, emulators are, design are pieces of software designed to mimic the functions of an old operating system. Uh, in this case, the operating system is the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, so that files readable by that system can be read. I'm going to go back to sharing my other screen. Great. Great. That was fun. I wish I had played some more. Emulation tends to be undertaken by very large communities of enthusiasts, and it tends to skirt copyright in order to preserve content that would otherwise be lost. Uh, much more of the time in our work, because we're a small community uh, and we're interested in more than one kind of digital challenge, like not just Super Mario World, we're stuck with migration. Trying to transfer content 
say, text uh, from one format and carrier to another, uh, which hopefully will be more legible. Uh, what you're looking at above is the session minutes from 1994 for a church in Missouri. And we have the rest of their minutes from 19, from, excuse me, 1876 to 1985. So more than a century's worth of their minutes. Um, and then we have them again from 98 to 03, all on paper. The rest of the 90s are gone, except for uh, these floppy disks and the PWP files that they contain. Here, what we have is a momentary carrier failure. Sometimes when you read a disk off of a portable USB floppy drive, it's touch and go. Um, we also have format obsolescence. PWP is a proprietary format made by a program called PhotoWorks. I gotta tell you, I have no interest in investigating whether or not I can open those files. Uh, for the past 25 years, PDF, which is an open standard published by Adobe, which means when Adobe goes the way of all flesh, uh, other people will be able to create readers and writers for PDF documents. PDF has been a commonly accepted standard for maintaining text, and it's what we use in conjunction with acid-free paper. And if you ever want to learn more about this stuff, or if you have other questions about what to do with your church's uh, born digital content, because technically everything is born digital, um, visit our website, you can email me, call me, get at me on Twitter. Thanks very much.